we're going to switch gears and you're going to go, why in the world is this in the same unit? But we're going to talk about solubility and solubility product constants. If you remember, if, especially if you had me for uh, last semester for 170, we talked about solubility rules. Solubility rules, I had to memorize them. I didn't make you memorize them because I was a nice person and there was enough on that test that was hard. Um, but, um, so the solubility rules um, are more like guidelines. And here's why. So solubility is not exactly as clear cut, uh, oh, clear cut black and white as the solubility rules make it out to be. So nitrates are always soluble all the time. Sulfates are virtually not soluble unless they're with such and such. So instead, what actually happens is you have degrees of solubility and those are based on an equilibrium process. And so since it's an equilibrium process, we have an equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant for this case is called a solubility product constant. So capital K italicized for equilibrium constant. And then we put SP for solubility product. And so that's the equilibrium constant for an equation that represents the dissolution, that means dissolving, of an ionic compound. And it is a measure of the overall solubility of this particular ionic compound. Note, this is only ionic compounds, not covalent ones. And like everything else with equilibrium, it also varies with the temperature. So, when you're writing out this equilibrium expression. You take your solid that you're going to be dissolving. In this case, um, it's calcium fluoride. And you break it apart and you write, so that's one calcium, two moles of fluoride. So when you write your solubility product constant, concentration, calcium ions, fluoride ions, and then the two uh, coefficient becomes an exponent. So be careful there. We do have to, we do care about exponents when we're doing solubility products. We don't care about the solids. Solids aren't included in equilibrium. So we only care about these ions. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about molar solubility. Molar solubility means we're going to express the solubility in units of moles per liter. We calculate that directly from solubility product constant. And this gives you the concentration to make a saturated solution. Now, what is a saturated solution? A saturated solution is one where if you add any more, so you can't get any additional solid to dissolve. Um, it's, it, you, you put it in there, no matter how much you stir it around, we're not going to talk about heating, but at a constant temperature, no matter how much you stir it, it's just going to remain solid. An unsaturated solution would be when you have, uh, you're, you're putting stuff in, and as you add more solid, it does dissolve. So that's unsaturated. So this is the most that we can put in a solution where it's all going to dissolve. So you have to understand how these ionic compounds dissolve. Now, this math is going to look a little bit weird with how they do it. I agree, but it's not hard. You can do this. So here we we're going to dissolve silver chloride into silver ions, chloride ions, no coefficients here. That makes it easy. So here we get our solubility product and there is our, uh, this is an equilibrium constant. So there's no units on it. Uh, thank goodness. Now we do molar solubility represented by a capital S. S represents the concentration of the compound that actually dissolves. Now, you do this with an ice table. 
and because these are going to break apart in parts so we have our initial our change and our equilibrium so here if we have uh, that doesn't matter because it's solid the amount of silver ions we have initially is zero as is chloride now previously we have done X's in our ice tables. When we're doing solubility, we write S's. So S for solubility. So here you're going to have however much dissolved. The coefficient is one, so the coefficient stays one. Here, same thing. Coefficient is one, coefficient is one. All right, so that means at equilibrium, we have this concentration and this concentration. It's both S's. I know it's weird. I understand. Now, so now we feed this and we're going to solve for S instead of X. So we have 1.77 times 10 to the negative 10th. That's our solubility product. And if we write our equilibrium expression, silver chloride, plug and chug, S and S. 1.77 times 10 to the negative tenth. I know most of y'all can do this part in your head. I'm just showing you the work for right now. So how do we solve for S? Take square root. When you do that, you're going to get something like uh, 1.77 10 to the negative tenth. 1.33 times 10 to the negative five. So the solubility of AgCl is 1.33 times 10 to the negative 5 molar or if you want to write moles per liter that's how much you can dissolve in an aqueous solution so which you how much you can put in water and it will actually dissolve now if you want to go on you can convert that to grams and it's it's a really small amount so most of the time we say this is not soluble according to solubility rules but Technically, it is soluble a little bit. So, let's do another one. This is just going to be, again, this stuff, this is not hard. You can do this. Let me pull this down. There we go. All right, so let's calculate the molar solubility. This is lead to chloride in water. So, the first thing we should do is let's write our dissolution equation. So, lead to chloride that's a solid it's going to dissolve into lead plus two and in this case two cl minus two chlorides all right um i didn't give you the solubility product on here that was bad of me all right so the solubility here is um 1.17 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. So here, initial change equilibrium. And again, we're using S's, not X's. Start out with zero. Change one S here. Two S's here. So at equilibrium, we have S and we have 2S. So that means yes. Okay, making sure I got that right. So let's write our uh, equilibrium constant. Lead 2 and uh, Cl minus squared. Make sure you do that correctly. Now, plug and chug. So if you set this up, you'll, you'll be okay. 1.17, 10 to the negative fifth. For lead, we're gonna put S. And then for CL, we're gonna put 2S. Be careful here, because that is now squared. That's the tricky part. It's not hard, it's just something additional you have to remember. So here, 1.17, 10 to the negative fifth, 
equals s times 4s squared. Make sure you get that. So that equals 4s cubed equals 1.17 to the negative fifth. Let's divide by four. And then we'll take the cube root, 1.17, 10 to the negative fifth. Let's divide that by four. And then let's take um, the cube root, which I do by raising to the power of one third, because that's easy for me fractional exponents. So you're going to get solubility 0 0.14, 0 0.0143 molar. It's just an equilibrium expression. So write your equation, write your equilibrium expression, make your ice table, plug and chuck. Units will be in molarity because this is molar solubility molar solubility how many moles can you put in water that will actually dissolve now we can also go the other way we can also use the solubility number in order to calculate ksp so this is going the other direction so here, this tells us the molar solubility of a silver sulfate in pure water is this molarity. So let's calculate KSP. Start the same way. Let's write our dissolution equation. Ag2SO4, that's solid, so it doesn't count, makes Ag plus uh, two of them and SO4 minus 2. Next, let's write KSP. Let's write our equilibrium expression. So that's going to be Ag plus squared, because the 2 becomes the exponent, concentration SO4 minus 2. Next thing, make the ice table. So initial change equilibrium so we start out with zero, we have 2s, and we have s. So at equilibrium, we have 2s and 1s. Plug and chug equals here. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and just plug in this molar solubility straight from here. If if that works for you. If it doesn't, go ahead and just plug this in. 2s squared s. So again, we're going to end up with 4s cubed. And now I'm going to plug in here because that's how I do it. Again, if you want to plug in initially, that's fine. It won't bother me a bit. So you can put 2 times this and then times um, the molar solubility there. You will get the same answer. So 1.4 times 10 to the negative 2. We're going to cube that. And then we're going to multiply by 4. Order of operations matters. So here, KSP equals 1 point. Um, I'm just going to go with 0, 1 times 10 to the negative 5 if you can see the not glare on my calculator. So I'm just gonna round to two decimal places. No, it's not 1.01, it's 1.10, 1.10. Can't get my numbers in order, 1.10. All right, hopefully that makes more sense. Just a quick review. Write your dissolution equation, write your equilibrium expression, make your ice table, plug and chug, either direction. So that's why it's included in this unit because it's equilibrium and it's plugging and chugging. All right, now, relative solubility. Uh, 